Okay, welcome guys. So today we'll be discussing um, anything OSI model. Um, the OSI model is very relevant for network engineers. It's a concept that if you understand it today, it's going to live with you for the rest of your career. So we are going to define what the OSI is and how relevant it is to your career as a network engineer. So as you can see on the screen, the OSI first off stands for Open System Interconnection. It's a reference model. And this reference model was developed by the International Standard Organization, also known as ISO. Now, initially, the OSI was created to curb the problem of interconnectivity between devices from different vendors. So back in the days, you don't have the uh, opportunity to interconnect devices from different manufacturers. For instance, you can't connect a Cisco switch to maybe another switch from HP or Dell. Um, you are going to have issues because there is no universal standard or then there was no universal standard and uh, compatibility becomes an issue then. So the International Organization for Standardization or International Standards Organization, ISO, uh, came up with the OSI to standardize uh, the system. So kind of like open up the system so that we could have multi-vendor interconnection. Apart from that, OSI also helps us to understand the flow of information from one computer to the other on the network. So let us look at the seven different layers of the OSI. Uh, the OSI has seven layers, and these layers are numbered from bottom up. Uh, the first layer is physical layer. Uh, second layer is data link layer. And the third layer is network. The fourth layer is transport. Session is the fifth. Presentation layer is the sixth. And then seventh layer is application. Now we are going to walk you through each of these layers so we get to understand how application, how data is moved from one layer to the other. Now let me clearly explain this. Um, let's say uh, I may want to pick up a pen now. All right, so now let's say that this is Bob right and bob is trying to put up a skype call or let's say zoom to joy okay so have joy this side and basically this communication is going to pass through the different layers of the osr so the application layer is where the end users have access to interact with the applications so for instance, if you are making a Skype call, you are making a Zoom call, you are checking your email, you are sending an email on other, other applications like HTTP, HTTPS, like you are trying to look up something on a web page, all of this uh, function at the application layer. So for Bob to be able to put a call across, and it's going to start from the application layer and the application layer will work it down to presentation, presentation will work it down to session, all the way to transport, network, data link, and physical. Now, now the physical layer is where we have the physical connectivities, the cables connecting your devices, your laptops, your desktops, to the switches that we have on the network. And we are going to have physical communication between one um, cable that is connected to a particular port on a switch, to another port on that same switch that goes on the system. And then that call, so to say, the Skype call coming from Bob is eventually going to walk up all the way up to get to Joy at the application layer so that Joy will be able to pick the call and go ahead and communicate with Bob. So basically, this is the flow of data. So it starts from the application, you walk down to physical, and then to get to the other end, it's going to walk up from physical all the way to application so that the receiver will be able to interact with the application and then receive that call. Now, having uh, seen this, 
um, how the flow of information um, happens uh, within the OSI model. I would like us to take a look at the uh, explanation of what happens really at each of these layers of the OSI. Uh, starting from the first layer, the layer one, which also is referred to as physical layer, uh, is the first layer of the OSI. Yes, you're looking at the right hand side from bottom up, uh, that's layer one. So this physical layer uh, handles physical connectivity of the network. So we have the physical connectivities like wires, uh, things like RJ45 connectors, uh, all of these fall in within the physical layer. Those things we can see and touch that are used to interconnect network devices to the network, uh, network devices like printers, PCs, to the switch. So when data is flowing through the data uh, physical layer, um, this data is going to be converted into binaries, which is referred to as bits. Uh, so we have specific kind of devices that operate at the physical layer of the OSR. Uh, devices like HUB, unfortunately HUB is obsolete today, so it's no longer in use in modern day network. We have devices like repeaters, devices like cables, connectors. These are all classified as physical layer devices or layer one devices. So as I mentioned earlier, data that is flowing through the physical layer is called bits. And let's take a look at the second layer next to physical, which is data link layer. Um, the data link layer is the second layer of the OSR, as we can see from the picture at the right hand side. It provides connection between hosts on the same network. So the data link has no ability to provide communication between hosts on different network. By the way, hosts here refers to any device that could be connected to your network and be given an IP address. So if you have any device, it could be mobile phone, laptops, desktop, servers, printers, and all of these devices are connected to your network, and each of them is given an IP address, then it's, they are referred to as host. So at the data link layer, the data that is flowing through the network here is going to be converted into frames before it's forwarded to the network layer. So we have, um, a couple of things that the data link layer help us to do, things like physical addressing, uh, physical addressing meaning MAC addressing, MAC, media access control address, uh, uh, flow control, error correction, um, control, uh, access control, like you can implement access list using MAC address filtering, either in wired or wireless network, just to restrict who and what devices are allowed to connect to your network. So. All of these security layer two is really being implemented using the physical addressing or MAC address. Uh, we have specific type of devices that operate at the data link layer of the OSI model, devices like your network switch, devices like bridges, which were earlier devices before the introduction of switches, and even your network interface card, the NIC, all of these fall within the layer two or data link layer not forgetting your wireless access points that you use to uh, connect your wireless devices and give them access to the network. And let's quickly look at the third layer of the OSI model. Um, this is called the network layer. Um, the network layer provides connection between hosts on different networks. Now, when we are discussing about layer two or data link layer of the OSI, I did mention that it provides communication between hosts on same network. Okay, but then the network layer takes it a bit higher where you can have people on different network segments and they're able to still talk to each other using what is called routing. So layer three handles IP routing where we're able to connect devices on different locations on different continents um, together over the internet using certain methods. So it could be MPLS, could be VPN connection, uh, there are a host of technologies that are used uh, to make these things happen. And apart from that, uh, this layer also is responsible for logical addressing. Uh, logical addressing is what we call IP addressing. So of course, every device on a network must be given its own IP address. So these IP addresses given to devices are used 
um, to reach for reachability, uh, talk to each other, and then this addressing should be unique. So no two devices on a network should be given same IP address because it's going to lead to conflict on the network. Um, devices that operate at this layer, of course, router is a specialty of network layer because this is a device that is very, very capable when it comes to connecting devices or nodes on different networks and allowing them to talk to each other. We also have certain class of switches that can also operate at the network layer. And those switches are referred to as multi-layer switch or layer three switches. So protocols like IP, um, both version four and version six of IP, which is internet protocol, internet control message protocol that is ICMP, operate at the network layer of the OSI model. And the layer four, the transport layer, um, helps us to uh, 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 for segmentation. Okay, so it converts packets into segments and forward it to the session layer. Now, this layer is responsible for, as I mentioned, segmentation, connection control, flow control, and error control. Uh, so at the layer four of the OSI model, we have protocols like TCP, transmission control protocol, um, is used mostly for data communication, web browsing, sending of mail, and all that. And we also have user datagram protocol, which is UDP, which handles um, delay sensitive applications like video calls, video conferencing, streaming, and the likes. Okay, so it's still in this same transport layer, layer four, that we have a bit of security like IPsec, internet protocol security, and um, devices that operate at this layer, typically a firewall, hardware-based firewall, that your company might have in their premises to protect them from attack and malware, um, this classified as a layer four device. So data passing through this layer is converted into segments. Um, now let's look at the session layer, which is the fifth of the OSI model, is responsible for dialogue control and synchronization. So initiating and terminating sessions is controlled by the session layer. Uh, so the layer also controls duplexing, termination, and restarts of sessions. So we have protocols like TCP, transmission control protocol, RTP, real-time protocol that operate at the session layer. Now, when you open a web browser and then you uh, go to maybe www.facebook.com, you have actually opened a session, uh, what we refer to as a tab, okay? So and you could actually open another session within the same web browser and go to another URL, another website, and be doing a whole lot of stuff or multiple sessions open within your browser. So these sessions are initiated and terminated, controlled by the session layer. And let's look at the presentation layer. It's the sixth layer of the OSI model, starting from the bottom up. And this layer is responsible for translation, encryption, and compression. Yes. So for instance, um, that's what they call data formatting. Um, if like, for instance, you are taking up a picture to Facebook, of course, the presentation layer is going to translate that picture into a particular format that every server on the internet will easily identify. So uh, there are standard pictures for, uh, standard format for pictures like JPEG, uh, have the GIF, PNG, and what have you. So the work of presentation layer is to translate these images in a format that every internet server will be able to identify. It does also encryption. So being able to disguise and encrypt our data for security reasons so that somebody will not be able to stumble on it and read the content accidentally or intentionally, uh, presentation layer handles that using protocol like SSL, which is secure socket layer. Now let's look at the last layer, which is application layer. The application layer is responsible for users to be able to interact with the data. Um, without the application layer, users will not be able to make use of this data, like sending a mail, uh, doing a Skype or Zoom call, video conferencing, 
and even browsing the web pages using HTTP protocol or HTTPS. So this layer ensures that user interface and support services like mail access, file transfer, browsing the internet, remote desktop connection, and what have you, are uh, really taken to the end user. So we're able to interact and make use of these applications because of the application layer. So in essence, we say the application layer provides the user with a graphical user interface that allows the user to directly interact with data. So we have protocols, examples of protocols that operate at the application layer or the layer seven of the OSI model like file transfer protocol, FTP, we have Telnet, we have SSH, DSCP, HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, POP3, that is Post Office Protocol version 3, SMTP, Simple Mail Transport Protocol, and etc. etc. So this is like a brief description of each of the layers and which services and protocols operate at each of the seven layers of the OSI model. So in a nutshell, uh, we look at the OSI from bottom up, from physical data link, network, transport, session, presentation, and application layer. You see that from layer five to seven, which is session, presentation, and application, they are classified as upper layer. While transport, which is layer four, all the way to physical, which is layer one, are classified as lower layers. And when data is being sent over the network, data will eventually go through all of these layers. And a particular layer that the data is, at a particular point in time, the data is converted to a particular format. For instance, when the data is passing through the physical layer, meaning the data is passing through a network cable, going to the switch, and the switch will switch the data to another port where another cable is connected to, to the receiver PC, um, that data is going to be converted to binaries, which is bits. Now, if we move up uh, to the data link layer where we have the switches, it's converted from bits to frames, and then from data link where we have the switches to network layer where we have the routers, the data again is converted from frames to packets, and so on and so forth. So when we get to transport layer, which is layer four, the data is converted again from packets to segments. Now from layer five, six, and seven, this data is referred to as upper layer data. So in a nutshell, this is what we've been saying. So we can take a look at this last slide and see that from layer one, two are purely physical. These are where we have the hardware. Uh, layer three, all the way to seven, mostly software. So look at the protocols, examples. We've not exhausted all the protocols that are, are operating in each of these layers. This is just a sample of what we have in each of the layers. So we have RS-232 connection, DSL connection, 10 base T, 10 base TX, ISDN T1, E1 connections as part of physical layer uh, protocols. And we have MPLS, we have app, Ethernet, 802.11x, PPP, frame relay, ATM. Uh, some of these protocols are no longer in use today. Like FIDI, uh, protocols like frame relay have been replaced by MPLS and so on and so forth. So um, just take a look at this and then might get more resources on this as to the uh, all the protocols that are contained in each of the layers of the OSI. But the concept of OSI model, everybody, every one of us when we came in new to networking. Uh, that's the concept we have to learn um, from the very beginning. And then that knowledge will stay with you throughout your networking career, from the basic networking like CCNA, all the way to intermediate level like CCMP, even to the advanced expert level like CCIE, you still have to know and apply this concept in your day-to-day -day networking troubleshooting, networking management, and maintenance. So that's how far we can go in this OSI model tutorial. And then in our next video, we're going to be looking at LAN setup and configuration. Thank you for watching. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to the channel. Bye for now.